Welcome to the fourth video in our ZepBound and GLP medication series. We've already covered the foundations, indications, and side effects of ZepBound, Wegovi, Saxenda, and more. This fourth video will cover dosing and handling of the medications. Let's go. I'm Dr. Brian Hartman, a physician with the telehealth company Emerge. We specialize in weight management and urgent care medicine. Now let's start by talking about pharmacokinetics. It's a big word, but basically how a medication gets absorbed, distributed, and its effects experienced. We'll talk about half-life, time to peak onset, duration of action. Once weekly injectable GLP-1 medications such as Monjaro, Zepbound, and Wegovi, Ozempic, have about a five-day half-life. This means that if you inject 10 milligrams on day zero, then you'll have approximately five milligrams effective dose in your system on day five. On day 10, you'll have approximately 2.5 milligrams. This is important to understand as it affects initial dosing, escalation, and thoughts on maintenance. Because of this long half-life, we're able to dose once a week versus Saxenda that requires once daily dosing since its half-life is 13 hours. Now that's still a significant improvement over our natural GLP-1 molecule that has a half-life of just under two minutes. Now the trick in creating medications like this to interact with a receptor is to have it similar enough to bind to the receptor, but different enough to avoid degradation by our natural pathway so that it lasts longer. Saxenda is usually escalated weekly as the shorter half-life allows the medication to achieve a steady state level in about a week compared to four weeks with ZepBound or Wegovi. Saxenda's peak concentration was after 11 hours, so the effects are usually felt pretty quickly upon starting. Terzepatide, Monjaro, ZepBound, has a five-day half-life, which means it takes about four weeks to achieve a steady state level in your blood. So if you're increasing from five milligrams to 7.5, you won't feel the full effect of that 7.5 until after your last injection of the box. So be careful when you're pushing to increase doses too quickly. You won't know how that dose is working until nearly the end of the fourth injection. Now, terzepatide has variable absorption and peaks between 8 to 72 hours after the injection. Semaglutide has a longer half-life, nearly a week. And this steady state level is still around four weeks, so be sure to only escalate after one month at a specific dose. If you increase too quickly, then you never truly felt the effects of the prior dose. And remember, the goal is to use the lowest effective dose of any medication. We want to achieve the desired effects with the lowest risk of side effects. Timing of injection. Now, as I said earlier, the peak absorption of these medications could be as little as seven hours or as long as 72 hours after injection. So the timing of when you take them isn't all that important. But listen to your body. If you get significant nausea, diarrhea, or other side effects at a certain interval after taking the medicine, adjust your injection day so that those side effects are likely to fall at a time when you can manage them better. You don't want significant diarrhea the night of your wedding, right? Because of the shorter half-life of terzepatide, Many patients feel breakthrough hunger as the injection date nears, especially before a steady state level has been reached. If you find yourself with significant breakthrough hunger, constant thoughts of food, and other effects, try to time the injection at a time when breakthrough symptoms are more manageable. You don't want your breakthrough hunger on the day you always meet your family at the all-you-can-eat pizza buffet, and perhaps you should change that habit anyway. Now, if you're enjoying this video, please take a moment to click the like button and subscribe to our channel. Your support encourages us to create more content on this and other topics. We can only impact so many people through our direct medical care at our online telehealth company Emerge, link below in the description and comments. Now YouTube is a great platform to amplify our message, but it takes your help. All right, moving on. What dose is best? This is a bit of a trick question since there's no specific answer. It's different for everyone. Again, the goal with any treatment is the lowest possible dose that achieves the desired result. If you're losing a pound or two per week, there's probably not a reason to increase the dose. If you're losing multiple pounds per week, celebrate your achievement and plan another month on the same dose, at least. Some patients never go above 5 milligrams of terzepatide and lose significant amounts of weight. In the ZepBound trial, there's only a minimal increase in weight loss between the 10 milligram and 15 milligram doses, despite a dose increase of 50%. This suggests that 10 milligrams might be the sweet spot for Monjaro or ZepBound. I've heard of some people taking even higher doses than 15 milligrams, and it's not a good idea mm -mm. at this point. Neither is mixing GLP medications no. like Wegovy and ZepBound. If you need additional medications to treat obesity, it's best to choose another class of medications and use the synergy that comes with that rather than push past approved dosages. Now there is a trial for 7.2 milligrams of semaglutide once a week. That's currently three times higher than the current approved dose for the treatment of obesity. How do you handle the pens? Saxenda, we're gonna store between 36 and 46 Fahrenheit, which is two to eight Celsius, and do not use if it's been frozen. Once used, it's stable at room temperature or in the refrigerator for a month. Leave the cap on the pen and don't store it with a needle attached and avoid heat and direct sunlight. These are all pretty similar. Ozepic and Wegovi store at 36 to 46. Do not use the frozen. 
Once used, it's stable on the counter of the fridge for 56 days. So you do not need to refrigerate the pen if you're traveling and it will be used up in a few weeks. And do not store again with a needle attached. On Jaro and Zetbound, store at 36 to 46 Fahrenheit. Each single use pen can be stored at room temperature for up to 21 days outside the refrigerator. Maintenance. Now this is a huge question in the world of obesity medicine. What does maintenance look like? If you're on 10 milligrams per week of Zetbound to get down to your goal weight, what do you do moving forward? Do you stay on the same dose? Do you reduce the dose? Do you stop it entirely? Or is there another option? Remember that obesity is a chronic, relapsing condition affected by over 80 genes. And during the course of your treatment with medication, did any of those genes get modified? Sure, we have changed our behaviors a bit and reduced our intake, but our body has adjusted along the way as well. Our metabolism has slowed, and it will be hard to maintain our goal weight without assistance or significant behavioral changes. People who are most successful at maintaining significant weight loss exercise an hour a day, five days a week. Now this is cardio, not slowly walking around the gym, lifting weights a few times in between YouTube videos. It's sitting on a piece of cardio equipment for an hour or walking your neighborhood or some other active movement. That being said, those studies were done before GLP-1 medications existed. But just like high cholesterol, high blood pressure, and other genetic plus lifestyle diseases, it's reasonable to treat obesity with long-term medications. Do we stop your blood pressure medication when you get to goal? Or is it considered a medication success and continued indefinitely? The same should be true with obesity. Some patients choose to reduce their dose and keep the same weekly injection schedule. Others prefer to keep the same dose but extend the dosing schedule. Either way is fine, but you need to ensure you are not losing too much weight and that your body composition is appropriate. So once you get to your goal weight, it's a good idea to get a body composition scan done, especially if you've not done one yet. What percent is your body fat? Muscle mass. The goal in treating obesity is not to get to a number. It's a combination of weight, body composition, and metabolic parameters, as well as functional fitness. Maybe your goal is unreasonable. Maybe it's much too low, or maybe too high. Body composition and other tests can help determine where you are at in your journey, and if you're at the proper endpoint. It's a good idea to undergo body composition scans along the way so that you end up at your goal in good shape. How to inject. Most of these medications come in an auto-injector pen, but there are some differences between them. Whichever medication you're using, be sure to clean the injection site well with an alcohol pad that is at least 70% isopropyl alcohol. There are several sites you can use to choose for injection. Two inches around your belly button, the anterior and lateral thighs, and the back of the arm are most common. Now some people claim different side effects and results based on where they inject. I don't understand the physiology behind that, but it's hard to argue with the number of reports we hear on it. These locations are used because there's usually adequate subcutaneous tissue and there's no major blood vessels or nerves in the area. Now, if you're using the back of the arm, make sure it's not the underside of the arm that touches your chest. There are blood vessels there. Now onto the medications. First, we'll cover Ozempic. This is a multi-dose pen that has either two, four, or eight milligrams of semaglutide in the pen. Since it is multi-use, it must have a removable needle to avoid contamination and the reduced risk of infection. To start, take off the cap on the pen and remove a needle from its package. Screw the needle onto the pen and then remove the outer cap of the needle. Then remove the inner cap. There's a dial on the other end that you twist to load the proper dose, but the first time you use the pen, only turn it once until you reach the flow check indicator. When you press the trigger, it will eject a drop of the medication to prove the system is operational. Next, turn the dial until you reach the desired dose in the window. There are charts to convert clicks for each pen if you are looking for a dose other than the pre-marked ones. You can find those online if you're interested. When you inject the medication, the dial will spin back to zero and then hold the pen in place for six seconds to ensure the medication has been delivered. Then remove the needle and dispose of it in a safe manner. Ozempic pens are good for four to six injections, depending on the dose you're prescribed. Saxenda is similar to Ozempic in that it is a multi-dose pen that is generally good for four to six doses. Wegovi, Monjaro, and Zetbound are single dose pens that have built-in needles and the pen is dose specific. If you need a different dose, you need a different pen. Now these pens come in boxes of four, enough for 28 days of therapy. The delivery system will inject the entire dose when triggered, retract the needle, and then you can dispose of the pen. It is important to hold the pen in place until the yellow indicator bar stops moving and you hear a second click, indicating the dose has been delivered. It's a good idea to hold in place 10 seconds total to ensure the injection is complete. Then discard the pen. Now Zetbound and Monjaro do not have the yellow indicator bar, but you can watch the plunger move down. Do not withdraw the pen until you hear the second click. I did this once after waiting six seconds and the plunger had not yet moved. Once I removed the pen, I watched all the precious medication shoot in a beautiful arc across the room. Don't let this happen to you. If you're interested in choosing Emerge as your weight loss physician, check out our website at emerge4.me.
we can handle your urgent care needs as well. Thank you so much for watching this video. The next one will cover cost considerations of GLP medications and how to save money on them. Give us a like down below and subscribe to our channel if you enjoy this content. Now, let's get healthy together.